the bell icon to turn on notifications. The most important thing to do when you have a duplicate record or records in a list is to get rid of them, as you probably saw in the previous module. But sometimes you just need to identify the data attributes, which includes the duplicates in a data set. It might be useful to see the source information together. This list appears to be arranged in a random order. We have the last name, first name, email, start date, age, department, the ID, and the respective salaries of these personnel that are listed over here. Now, we have no idea if there are any duplicates. Let's sort the list. And if you're trying to group duplicate records together, the best field probably is the ID field. You might think that the last name is suitable, but keep in mind that not all people with the same name are the same person, right? So let's sort this list using column D. A quick way to sort this list would be to click on column D, then on the data tab, and then you have a couple of options here, A to Z, Z to A. So Z to A meaning highest to lowest, and A to Z would be lowest to highest. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just click on this button, and the list is now sorted. Let's go through the list and see if there are any duplicates. So we see a duplicate over here. We have another duplicate over here. And we have another duplicate over here. You can see them right now, but imagine if the data set consisted of thousands of rows of data. Would you want to sift through them then? So let's add a column over here to identify duplicate records. So let me just name this column duplicate records. I will be using an if formula, and using that formula, I will compare this data within the cells to determine if the data is duplicate or unique. So I4 is left blank because it's the first row, and after filtering, you can clearly see that there are no duplicates. I'll start with cell I5. I'll begin by typing equal if left parenthesis, and I will compare the data in A4 is equal to A5. And we can even extend the comparison to a number of columns. And all you need to do in that case is to include an AND, A-N-D, before writing your comparative formula. And then it will look like if AND, A4 equals to A5, then B4 is equal to B5. And I want to extend this all the way column H, but this becomes very complicated. As you can see, the formula is becoming larger as I extend the analysis to more columns. Then I will check the email address as well. C4 is equal to C5, and then D4 is equal to D5. The formula is already very long, but let's see what happens. I'll close the parentheses, and then if the value is true, Meaning, if there is a duplicate record, I will say that you should check. Otherwise, if the data is unique, I will say that those rows of data are okay. Then I'll close this statement by using the right parenthesis and hit enter. And then I'll drag the formula down. So, as you can see, there are a number of line items where the data seems to be duplicated. I can identify four rows of data which are duplicated. Now the formula is already really long. So I need to make the formula crisp because this is a very long formula. So how can I do that? All I need to do is I will just ask Excel to compare A4 through H4 with A5 through H5, and then I delete the rest of the formula because I've summarized the formula by comparing the row A4 through H4 with A5 through H5, and I hit enter. And then I just drag the formula down, and I get the same result. 
four rows of data need to be checked because they have duplicate records. Now let's say we also want to know how many unique departments do we have. I can either go in this on the filter list and count them, but imagine if you have a much larger data set, that will be very time consuming and prone to error. So what would be a simpler way to just count the unique records in your data set? There is a very simple formula for that. So I'll just show you how to do that using a very interesting Excel formula. It's called unique. So I will just start by typing equals unique, left parenthesis, and then I select the entire array of department and right parenthesis, enter. And as you can see, there are five departments within this data set. But this data is not sorted. Let's say we want to sort this data. So I'll just update my formula by typing in sort, S-O-R-T, left parenthesis, and then I'll close the formula by adding a right parenthesis. And then in order to close this particular formula, this is called an array formula because this is a dynamic formula. So in order to close the formula, I need to hit the control, shift, and enter key. And now the data is sorted in alphabetical order. Now let's say I want to count the number of unique records. So how can we do that? So there is another very useful Excel formula called COUNTA. I can use that formula by typing equals C-O-U-N-T-A, and then I select the department section, right parenthesis, enter. There are 53 line items in the department category. And if I want to count the number of unique records, I will just enhance this formula by adding unique U-N-I-Q-U-E, right parenthesis, enter. So there are five unique departments. As I mentioned earlier, these formulas are dynamic. So let's say that we have another new department in this company, and a couple of people from that company are going to move to that department. That department is called R&D. So see what happens. If I type R&D over here, all of a sudden, it also shows up in the list of departments and the count increases from five to six. So these formulas are extremely useful because they change when the underlying data set changes. In this module, we discussed some very useful Excel formulas to identify duplicates in our data set. We discussed the compound if statement, unique and count a formulas. All of these functions can quickly summarize the duplicate data. These functions also help us in quickly determining the most common characteristics in a data set, such as the number of departments in a company. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And Click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.